Opinions expressed on this radio program do not necessarily reflect the views of this radio station. My friends and I always tune into the Todd Levitt Law Show. Todd is entertaining, informative, and always delivers the goods. Todd might not tell you what you want to hear, but he's going to tell you what you need to hear. And all you got to do is listen. Hold on, Todd. Don't let go. It's time for the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. Welcome to the Todd L. Levitt Marijuana Law Podcast. Good morning, good evening, and good night. I'm yours truly, Attorney Todd L. Levitt, broadcasting and podcasting from the Black Diamond Group Mothership in the North Pole, helping Santa and his elves get ready for Christmas. It is the show before Christmas with my good friend Craig Russell, no poem required, the muscle how you doing, Russell? Well, Todd, I'm going to tell you, today is an auspicious day in the history of the world. It was 50 years ago today I came out of my mom. It's my Happy birthday. birthday. 50th birthday today, man. I've turned the big 5-0. You know what they say, 50 is the new 72, so I feel fantastic. So, yes! Yes! Uh, happy so I, birthday! Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I yeah, and if Bill Knapps was still in business, oh, you could man. go get 50% off your meal. You know, I don't. never figured that out why our grandparents always used to take us there. That's because why. Because they always got a discount on yeah. their birthday. And my grandparents yeah. lived into their late 90s. So, yeah. I mean, they were definitely uh, getting a good deal there. And I, you know, no offense against Bill Knapps, but, uh, you know, I wanted to go somewhere like you know, Bonanza or Ponderosa. <laughs> Back in the day, I was a yeah. I was a bus boy when I was 12, 13 years old at the Bonanza at 11 in Greenfield. And uh, so, yeah, that was one of my first jobs. But happy birthday, Craig Russell. And for you. the birthday show, our Christmas edition, I have one of your good friends, one of my best friends, the king himself, attorney Steve Lato, who has over 100,000 subscribers to Lato's Law on YouTube in the mothership. Lato, welcome to the mothership. Yes, you know, it's good to be here. And Todd, if I can just extrapolate from what you said earlier, you implied that your parents and grandparents specifically lived longer just to get a discount at Bill Knapp's. That is correct. <laughs> and all the free right. car washes and donuts. I mean, every <laughs> every birthday, I mean, we made the rounds to every place that yeah. offered anything and everything for their birthday. Had no They're idea what was going on. on their deathbed going, I need to hang on one more year. I need to get another percent point off my Bill Knapp's you know, menu price. <laughs> hey, they, you know, so they true. Still, they still sell that Bill Knapp's chocolate cake. You can get it at Meyer. It's fantastic. 
If you're and not, thank you for not saying Myers because it's no, not it's Myers, not. it's, it's Meyer. Meyer. That's right. I, I, dude, I've been in radio long enough in Michigan to know you can't call it Myers. You can't call it. Uh, you didn't Kroger's. Use, you couldn't Kroger's. call it Kroger's or Kmart's or any of that other stuff. It's not. There, Meyer people will be very upset if you call it Myers on the air. They don't like that. But yes, you can get Bill Knapp's uh, cake all over. I think I'll be getting one later on this afternoon. So. There we go. Hey, Merry Merry Christmas to all you guys, by the way. Merry Christmas to you, too. Hey, Steve Lado, how you doing, Steve man? Steve Lado. I'm doing very well, guys. I'm glad to check in on, on this festive occasion. One of the leading consumer lawyer extraordinaires across this great country of ours and the host, producer, director of his very own YouTube channel with over 100. How many subscribers to your channel now, Steve? 115,700. And and by the way, I'm also the talent. <laughs> you are the talent. <laughs> and you're extremely That's entertaining. Term. <laughs> and I, I, would, I would definitely recommend all our listeners around the world, because this is also a podcast, to tune in on YouTube to Lato, L-E-H-T-O, Law, subscribe. You're, you're, you're very entertaining, but you're 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 pretty brilliant of a, of an attorney, if that makes sense. I mean, you're so well, darn smart. I, thank Lato. you. And, and and I'll tell you right now, one of the funniest things that I've done, and I, I have to give myself props for this because I wasn't sure it was going to work, but it did. I got sued. Somebody actually sued me the frivolous lawsuit about two months ago, and instead of getting angry about it, I shot four videos where I basically explained the whole lawsuit against me, and I and I told my audience. I'm being sued in a four part episode, you know, series. <laughs> and the fourth episode came out recently. And it turns out it's the most popular thing I've ever done. And and it's not just that people wanted to see me get sued, they wanted to know how the story ended. It ended well, but you know, it was entitled Welcome to Crazy Town because that's where I felt <laughs> I was living for a little while because of the frivolous lawsuit. So, you know, as an attorney, I, I sue people all the time, but they're good lawsuits. And so when someone sued me with a frivolous lawsuit, it was it was frustrating. But I said, you know something? I, I can get angry or I can shoot a video. <laughs> Let's shoot a video. <laughs> See, well, the fact that the attorney took the case, sorry, the fact that there's an attorney who took on a case to sue you and the other plaintiffs is just insane and it's unethical. Bottom line, Steve, yeah. just sum up for the listeners what, what the case was about, but they should definitely tune in to your videos to get the entire story but just sum yeah, no, it up. No, what happened yeah what happened was i i represent people who sue car dealers and auto repair facilities and so on and and, and a few years back i represented a guy and he sued a, we, we, we on his behalf we sued a auto repair facility that did a shoddy job and we got a judgment we collected and and in the process of collecting the judgment the guy wouldn't pay so i had to get like sheriff's deputies out there and they executed a writ of execution on his property and the guy waited six and a half, seven years and decided to sue us back for having sued him. And you can't sue someone for suing you. Never Otherwise, heard of that. Turning... Yeah, yeah, it's insanity. So um, the the first episode of I'm, you know, Welcome to Crazy Town, I'm being sued uh, has been viewed over half a million times, which is good for me. I mean, you know, that's, that's, those are good numbers for me. So uh, those aren't Kardashian numbers, but they'll do. Uh, and so... <laughs> Nor you know, do you I, I look like the Kardashians, by thank the way. God. Thank, thank God. Thank you. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. Like sure. I said, my, 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 my thing was, you know, something I, I could I could stew about this or I could shoot a video and just have fun with it. So I decided to have fun with it. <laughs> See, that makes perfect sense, Steve, because you are, you know, you're a lemon lawyer. What you did is you took lemons and you made really, really expensive, good tasting lemonade out of it. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like that description. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Steve, um, we have you on the show, our pre-Christmas show here in the mothership. Uh, a few weeks back, I was up at my good friend Jim Pashaw's body shop, Jim's Auto Body Shop in Claire, Michigan. Love Jim Pashaw, the body shop, Sound Productions, oh, yeah. Mid-Michigan Towing. I mean, I don't. I, there's nowhere else I go other than Jim's Auto Body Shop. We have some great places here in Mount Pleasant, too, but I'm a loyal friend of Jimmy. And... He brought to my attention something that reminded me of the medical insurance industry, and we're definitely going to be talking about that. So, Steve, if you could tease the audience, what exactly are we going to be talking about in regards well, to that? Everybody knows that if your car gets in an accident and you've got collision coverage on it, you can take it to a body shop and have them repair it, and your insurance company will pay for those repairs. And in the old days, you could just take it to any reputable body shop, and they do the repairs and send the bill to insurance companies. And unfortunately, nowadays, the insurance companies have gotten so tight with the money that they not just oversee the repairs, but they actually will nickel and dime the body shops to the point where they're like, well, we'll pay to fix it, but we'll only pay this much. Or we'll authorize you to put a used part on, but not 
add a new part or they'll actually push these guys to try to find like junkyard parts instead of OEM parts. And so what happens is it makes the repairs take longer and it makes repairs lesser quality. And I've, I've, I've talked to other guys in the body shop industry, and this is a problem nationwide. They say, you know, we want to do good work, but unfortunately good work costs more than the insurance companies are willing to pay. And it reminds me of what the doctors are going through when an insurance company goes, look, we'll pay for this test, but not that test. Or, you know, maybe we'll send you over here for a second opinion because we don't like this doctor's opinion. And, and insurance companies are there to pay the bills, but not to oversee how the professionals do their work. Exactly. And there's a lot of issues involved. And we're going to be talking about that throughout the show here, our Christmas show in uh, the mothership with attorney Steve Lato and Craig Russell. We also have some emails and some questions that we will get to regarding uh, Michigan recreational cannabis possession limits. I also have a question regarding a ballot initiative, uh, how to get uh, signatures uh, on a ballot initiative. Uh, to force local governments to put recreational cannabis on the local ballots and elections. So I have an email from that. We have uh, an update on uh, employers and cannabis. So we have a lot to get to here, our pre-Christmas show, guys. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Sounds Christmas. Like Merry Christmas yeah. to all. Uh, we'll take a break right now. We come back. I got a couple of questions for Steve about this whole uh, body shop thing. And we're going to be talking to Jim in a couple of weeks after the first of the year, right, Todd? Yeah. So Steve Lato has agreed to come back on the show together with uh, our good friend Jim Pashaw mm-hmm. uh, sometime in January. So we'll definitely give you a heads up so we can continue that discussion. And you can hear firsthand from someone that owns a large body shop. And then some, you know, what exactly has been the negatives regarding our discussion here. We will have uh, more more with Steve Lado coming up in the Todd Levitt Law Show. We'll be right back. Happy birthday, Craig. Thanks. Welcome back to the Todd L. Levitt Christmas Craig Russell birthday edition of the show with our good friend, attorney Steve Lato and Craig Russell. Steve, it it can't be said enough. Craig, happy birthday. Thank you very much. Yep, it was uh, at 11.10 a.m. on this day in 1969, uh, my mom gave birth, which depending on where you're listening to the show or what time you're listening to it, might be happening right now as we speak. I've already had two pieces of my... I already had two pieces of my Bill Knapp's chocolate cake, so I'm uh, I'm pretty happy right now. We have attorney Steve Lato in a mothership, uh, but I briefly want to answer a quick email from a listener up in Sheboygan County. Question is, can you state what the uh, Michigan Recreational Cannabis Possession Limits are in the state of Michigan? 
And I'll just briefly, uh, we've talked about this multiple times, but we appreciate all the listeners, and that's a great question. Sure. Under Prop 1, recreational cannabis in Michigan, adults 21 years of age or older are legally, folks, allowed to possess up to 2.5 ounces of cannabis outside their home and up to 10 ounces in their home. And additionally, guys, adults of age may possess and cultivate up to 12 plants in their home and possess no more than 15 grams of concentrate at any given time. I'll restate that up to 12 plants in their home and possess no more than 15 grams of concentrate at any given time. And from my understanding, it's 12 plants per resident. So if you have three adults living in one household, uh, that does not allow you to grow 36 plants. My understanding, and I'll have to look this over, it's just 12 plants per resident unless you're a caregiver and now you have those conflicting laws in place. But uh, that's where it stands as of now. Great question. And I hope that clarifies things for everyone. So in other words, it's not like your taxes, you can't claim your cats or anything just because if you've got, you know, six inhabitants in the house, you can't grow 12 plants per inhabitant. It's only 12 plants per residence, correct? Correct. Albeit there is the Medical Marijuana Act of 2008 that comes into conflict with that if you're a caregiver and you can grow up to 72 plants, five patients, including your own 72 plants. But uh, again, we've talked about this at length on prior podcasts and radio shows. So I'll just leave it at that for now. Oh, I was going to say, but it is also, on the other hand, it's good to know, it's good to get into uh, some of this stuff now, since, of course, you know, obviously, we just recently, in the last couple of weeks, uh, had had uh, uh, recreational cannabis go on sale in places in Michigan. So this stuff kind of gets brought up again, this stuff, uh, some of these issues kind of get uh, rehashed and, and rethought about because now people are concerned about this now because now it's actually real so it's good to bring that kind of stuff back up so we are always happy to answer listeners questions we also have another email we'll get to later in the show regarding petitions and signatures and a percentage of voters uh, who must sign petitions in order to put it on your local township or community uh, ballot for a vote we'll get to that later as well but first, let's get back to attorney Steve Lado. The king is in the house. Steve, what's up, Lado? It's good to be here. And happy birthday, Craig, born 50 years ago in a log cabin in Kentucky? Or is that the uh, other guy? That's the other guy. I was, <laughs> okay. born, I was born at Borges Hospital in Kalamazoo. So there's there that. There you go. So, there you go. But, uh, Steve Lado, who has uh, not only got a thriving practice, but also is a YouTube superstar and an internet sensation. Uh, tell people how they can get a hold of you and find out more about you and see all your videos and see all all your handiwork. I, I tell people to go on the internet, type Steve Leto, L-E-H-T-O, into Google and watch what happens because I've got my name out there pretty much everywhere. But um, I, yeah, the best thing to do is either look at my website, my homepage, latoslaw.com, or my channel on YouTube, which is simply Steve Leto, and you'll, you'll find me that way. And that's the way to find out what uh, 115,000 other subscribers uh, know already, that not only are you super entertaining, but super informative and a history buff, too. You know, we've got we've got go to people in the show that we talk to. We've got our guy, uh, Matt, who is uh, Matt Hatala, who is our our hemp guru. Anytime we have a dispute about historical things, especially in Michigan, I mm-hmm. always say to I say to Todd, I say, let's call Steve Leto. He'll know the answer to this question. And boom, well, yeah, I, there I, you I are. forget to mention I've written 12 books. So most of them were nonfiction history books about Michigan. But you mentioned Kalamazoo. And I'm not, you know, I like to, anytime I go on a radio show, I like to break something out. I've never told anybody before. Okay. I've never said this on my channel. I've never said this on a radio. But honest, I actually lived not far from Kalamazoo a few years ago. Okay. And I, I dated two women from Kalamazoo, each crazier than the last. <laughs> <laughs> well, I grew so, up in Kalamazoo, and I know all about that, so let's so just, just say. I'm just letting yes. you know yes. that if you've been to Kalamazoo, you know the women there, I think you know what I'm getting at. <laughs> I think, yes, exactly. Why do you think I went to Central? Why? You, you <laughs> seriously, fire up chips, because I know. Oh, trust yeah. me, I understand. Yeah. Well aware yeah. of the crazy that is in. Now, we love everyone in Kalamazoo. We love everybody across the whole the whole country. Come on. Of course. Getting back to what we were talking about, about the, uh, the auto body shops, this is a big deal. It, this is much similar to what we were talking about with uh, doctors and insurance companies and things. Are there some of these body shops, Steve, you know, we were talking about uh, how uh, the insurance companies are dictating where some of these body shops are getting their parts from and things. Are some of these body shops really, really closely aligned with these insurance companies? Is that kind of where we're going these days with this? 
I, I don't know if that's the case so much as it's it's if you watch TV nowadays and this drives me crazy. The two types of commercials you see all day long, pharmaceuticals and car insurance. We can talk about pharmaceuticals another day, but car insurance, the companies all advertise on price. We're cheaper than the other guys. Call us. We'll save you money. We're 15 percent cheaper. But they never say, oh, by the way, if you file a claim, we'll take good care of you. That's that's something they skip. And in reality, what happens is you take your vehicle into a body shop. The body shop looks at it, writes an estimate, sends it to the insurance company. And the insurance companies now fly spec it. They go over it line by line trying to nickel and dime it and to save every last penny they can because they have to because they're price advertising. And so as a result of this, they will often actually micromanage the repairs of your car to the point where they'll tell the body shop, oh, by the way, that fender you want to replace, we found a replacement fender in California. Order that one. Or we found a part for you in Maine. Use that part. And by doing those things, yeah, they're saving a couple bucks here and there, but they're delaying the repair. They might be using suboptimal parts. And in the end, it may makes them look bad and they know it. And so unfortunately, a lot of guys in the body shop business, I've talked to them, they tell me, they say, Steve, you know, here's the problem. We want to do good work, but good work costs money. And unfortunately, the insurance companies don't want to pay us the money necessary to do the work right. Now, I don't want to be that guy who says, oh, shouldn't the government get involved, you know, in over-regulation and stuff, but isn't there something that could be done government-wise? Well, yeah, and here's the thing. Most states have got insurance commissioners, but like in Michigan, the insurance commissioner's office is a revolving door. They bring in people who used to be in the insurance industry to oversee the industry they just left. And so it's it's in reality, I've, I've had problems with insurance companies. I've sued many of them, but I've tried filing claims before with the insurance commissioner just saying, hey, look, you should take a look at this. And they go, eh, what are you going to do? That's business. And so they really think the marketplace is going to solve this. And what it takes is more people to know what's going on. If people know this stuff is happening, you've got to pay very, very close attention. And when you bring your, your car into a body shop and you talk to the guy and say, look, you know, I want to get it repaired. And they say, hey, look, the insurance company's doing this. You may need to make the phone call to your insurance company and say, hey, look, I need my car back. And I don't care that you can save three dollars by getting me a, a fender out of, you know, uh, San Diego, as opposed to a fender out of a place here in Michigan, you know, it, it, I need my car back. And so you may have to actually get proactive about getting your own auto you know, repairs done. And it's sad it's come to that, but it's coming to that. So Steve, here's my question. You take your $30,000 vehicle or truck into an auto repair shop, such as Jim's auto body shop, where I go and Claire and Jim's coming on the show here in January. I, I don't want to use part put on my vehicle. If, I just, if I'm paying all this money or I'm just paid all this money for this vehicle, I want to replace it with something new. Are you saying that insurance companies, once you file a claim, if your vehicle is in an accident, that they will direct the shops to only or try to replace or fix the part or whatever needs to be fixed with used parts? That happens. And it even happens with auto repairs sometimes. And, and that's where you've really got to pay attention. I'm talking about uh, body know, work. I'm talking about body work. No, I understand that. I understand. That. But I understand it, it happens in all industries, too. And so you'll need to take a look at your insurance policy. And, and many people I talk to, clients of mine, who say, Steve, I filed a claim. I've got a problem. I say, have you read your policy? No. They haven't even read their policy. So when you get an insurance policy through any company, whatever it is, you should take it out, read it, and then hang on to it. So when you file a claim, you can read it and find out. I've had people tell me that they had claims denied, and, and there was something plain that was in their policy that said that they were entitled to it. And I look at it and go, well, I got to just look at it right there. And they're like, oh, I didn't see that. And yeah, it helps when an attorney makes that phone call, but you can make the phone call yourself on something that blatantly obvious. So you need to take a look at your policy, see what the policy says that they're allowed to do, and then just make sure that you stand up for yourself. And if necessary, call an attorney. It's good advice and it's good stuff. Um, you know, I just, I think uh, we pay enough for car insurance, especially in Michigan. Other places in the country don't have to pay nearly as much, but if we're paying this much for insurance, you know, if you're paying a oh, couple yeah. hundred bucks a month, you know, mm -hmm. you should be able to get the kind of service that you desire and need, uh, not something that's going to save, because these insurance companies are making money hand over fist. I mean, oh, they yeah. really are. That's the interesting I've also thing noticed that, that they just swamp the airwaves with commercials. I mean, almost every single insurance company, you know, Aaron Rodgers is in one of them. And, you know, you got this, that one. You're right. It's pharmaceutical companies with the same commercials over and over. And it's insurance companies, Lato. They, they swamp the, the channels nonstop. 
Good advice. Uh, we will get to uh, more with Steve Lado coming up. We've also got a couple more uh, questions from the uh, email, Show at gmail.com. We will be right back on the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. Welcome back to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show, broadcasting and podcasting from the Black Diamond Group Mothership in the middle of a green nutrient in some places, white, wet, cold, warm, sandy, depends on which part of the country or world you are downloading this show and listening. Regardless, I'm here with my good friend, Craig Russell, no poem required, birthday boy, 50th birthday, and his birthday gift, attorney Steve Lato broadcasting with us on the show steve thank you for being here on craig's birthday our christmas As show. always good to be here i uh, love having Lado on the show craig yeah he's fantastic i will say this much <laughs> the best i i know you guys don't have birthdays around christmas let me just tell you it you know as an adult it's not as big of a deal when i was a, when i was a kid having a birthday right by christmas sucked because you know what? Oh got, yeah. Didn't get birthday presents, got Christmas presents that were also your birthday presents. I usually got mm-hmm. taken out to dinner for my birthday to Red Lobster. That was my birthday present. So, wow. Yeah. Nowadays, if somebody wanted to take me out to dinner, I'd be totally good with it. So, but <laughs> uh, Attorney Steve Lato, you know, we always talk about uh, on our show how many people download. How many different countries are we in now, Todd? Over 30 that download this show? 35 countries. I just looked at it uh, yesterday. Thousands and thousands of downloads per show. We appreciate that. California, I got to pronounce the R, California is the second largest state downloading the show outside of Illinois. Big shout out to Illinois. Thank you, all the downloaders and all over the country. So. Yeah. And Lado, you have how many subscribers and how can listeners find you? 115,000 subscribers and counting on uh, YouTube. Just look up Steve Leto, last name L E H T O, and you'll find me. And how many you do with your glasses? Sorry, Craig, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and how many, since we get a bunch of these from out of the, uh, how many people do you get uh, from out of the country who uh, uh, consume your product? You know, I get a lot of people. The bulk of my viewers are in America. Most people outside of America only find our legal system a curiosity. <laughs> Here in America, yeah. people actually look for legal advice that they can use. But I actually have some 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 avid viewers uh, in like Finland, Czechoslovakia, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Scotland, Ireland. Uh, it's it's amazing because you know, with the reach of the internet, you get these questions from people and, and a lot of people in other countries do speak english so that works out <laughs> start talking more about marijuana and you'll have more l- l- viewers from all over the globe trust me yeah yeah I, france is understanding yeah france the great country of francais is our largest downloaded country outside the states france really wow yeah france big shout out to everyone in france 
Huh. And it's weird. We get people from China downloading this show and people from Sweden, places, the Netherlands, places where uh, marijuana and things like that are not even close to being legal, yet they have a curiosity about it. That's uh, interesting because, yeah, because in my in my case, it's almost all English speaking countries from the top down in the list. So it starts with America. Number two is Australia. I think number three is Canada. Number four is England. And so so I got to go way down the list to find people who don't speak English. Yeah, but obviously, uh, for I think for us, marijuana is the uh, the universal language. I, I believe you, it is. I guess you could say. <laughs> now the Finland thing it doesn't truly su- is the Finland thing doesn't surprise me because you are from Finnish descent, correct? Yes, my last name is Finnish, and a lot of uh, guys surfing YouTube spot that, and I get these uh, questions from people who have really really long last names, going, "You must be Finnish," and I say, "Yes, I am." And the good news is that most people in Finland speak more than one language, and many of them do speak English quite well. If marijuana is the universal language, I think English is as well. Speaking yeah. of uh, speaking of people surfing the net and asking questions and things, t- Todd, didn't we have another question you wanted to get to from the uh, the old mailbag? We did have another question from uh, one of our longtime uh, listeners to the podcast, uh, and it has to do with uh, employment and uh, marijuana, marijuana use in workplaces. Uh, Lato, do you ever do any employment law, Steve? I don't. I, I did a long time ago, but I've, I've been focusing on consumer protection and lemon law now for the last 25 years. So I don't I don't dabble in other fields anymore. One of the big issues and one of the big questions we will always get is protection in a workplace for those who participate in medical marijuana states and now recreational states and the hypocrisy whereby you can go out to work with your boss or the owner of the company, have a cocktail at a work party, and, and you can go back to work and nobody says anything, but you never, not that I know of, you never hear any stories where at the Christmas party, you know, the owner or all the supervisors took out a bong in a recreational state and allowed everyone 21 and over to take a hit of some new strains. I mean, there's just a hypocrisy. And in Michigan, under the new recreational laws, the, the act specifically does not require employers to permit or accommodate or even allow marijuana use in the workplace or places or on employers' properties. And, it, it, you know, specifically, the act does not prevent or limit the enforcement of workplace drug policies or policies that prohibit employees from working under the influence of marijuana. So there's a lot of hypocrisy out there. Look, we always say it, Steve, we don't want anybody uh, doing anything, whether you have a legal right to do so or not overdoing it to the point where you're going to put anyone at risk at your place of employment on the roadway or anywhere else. So, but again, there's a lot of hypocrisy. There are States out there that have now put uh, employer employee protections in place against employers who are discriminating against those who use THC. I've heard stories week in and week out whereby individuals cannot get jobs when, and when they're going through the application process or, and, or the interview, they are questioned you know, do you participate in recreational cannabis? I mean, I've never been asked or questioned uh, in, in an interview, guys. Hey, by the way, do you drink beer or alcohol? So the hypocrisy continues and uh, reefer madness continues for sure. Yeah, I think it's going to take a generation probably for that to actually change. Agreed. It's, 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 it's a mindset. The, you know, upper management people. Those folks have been so, you know, indoctrinated that that marijuana is evil and they look for it on drug tests, you know, and you're right. If a drug test returned that, hey, this guy drank a beer three days ago, nobody would care. It's no, like I said, I, look at all the parties where everybody's consuming alcohol and I'm not yeah. anti consuming alcohol. I'm just talking about the hypocrisy. It's yeah. inter- it's interesting that this gets brought up now because just about a week ago, uh, one of the major professional sports in this country, Major League Baseball, has basically taken marijuana off the drug testing spectrum for minor league players. So in other words, they're not going to, when they do drug tests for minor leaguers, they will not be testing for marijuana anymore. Uh, and they're going to replace that with opioids, especially because there's been a couple of high profile major league player deaths due to opioids in the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. But that's yeah. going to mean that's going to end up going to the next level. Baseball will probably be the first major professional sport, at least in this country, if not in the world, to recognize that marijuana is not a drug that they need to be uh, screening for because of the fact of the de- decriminalization of it in, in a lot of places in this country. I think that's really interesting because a lot of 
of uh, NFL football players have talked about how marijuana helps with a lot of their uh, their brain issues the and also their pain management from playing a very physical sport that marijuana can help with that. It's interesting that baseball is the one that's the first one that's doing that, but it is starting to happen. It's slowly starting to change. That's a great point. I have a good friend. I have a couple good friends who are actually sport agents, one out on the West Coast and one here, D. Todd Williams, located in Oakland County. We should definitely have one of those sports agents on the show to talk about the NFL and some of the other leagues, especially hockey and football, Yep, rugby. It's insane. I mean, the pain people go through playing these sports. It's crazy, Steve. That's unbelievable. Yeah, and like I said, it's it's one of those things. There's there's a lot of that, you know, the, the guys who play baseball who chew tobacco. I mean, th- yep. there was a time when every guy on the diamond apparently had a mouthful of tobacco. And, of course, now we tell kids, by the way, you know, you don't want to do that either. You know, so it's, it's just strange how we demonize some and not others and what's legal, what's not legal, how those things change over time. It's, it's, it's crazy. Well, it's just it's changing society, you know. I mean, yeah. when if you would have thought 50 years ago, the day I was born, how many states were had legal marijuana in some shape, way, shape, or form? Zero. They were getting ready yeah. to pass the uh, the Schedule One Drug Act in 1970. I mean, so think about things just have changed. This has basically been about a generation, maybe a generation yep. and a half. Yep. How how times have changed just since 1969 to 2019. Hey, Steve, I got a question for you. For the listeners who are just tuning in for the first time and may not have heard you on previous radio podcasts, uh, how long have you been an attorney? I've been practicing law for 28 years and almost exclusively in the fields of consumer protection and lemon law. So I'm licensed in Michigan. I handle cases statewide, and that's almost all I do is talk to people all day long about defective cars and what to do about their, their, their broken down lemons. And you authored the book, one of my all-time favorites. I learned so much from it, The Lemon Law Bible. Is that still for sale? Uh, yeah, you can get it on Amazon. It's also available on Kindle. And uh, yeah, in fact, I, I, I put out the first edition of that about 10 or 15 years ago, and I updated it a couple years ago. So it's the second edition. The new Lemon Law Bible is, uh, is available wherever fine books are sold, as they say. Are you going to have to? Are, are you going to have to update that with uh, when the advent of electric cars more often? Is that a different animal, or is it all no, still no, basically the same? No, it's, it stays basically the same. You know, the interesting thing is, there's fewer parts I think that'll go defective on an electric car. Uh, so I suspect that the number of defective cars on the road might drop as the population of electric cars increases proportionally. But um, we'll have to see. I've not had that many calls on defective electric cars, and I think Any, it's because the technology okay. is so simple. Any issues with the Fred Flintstone vehicle, uh, such as my 72 Grand Torino, where my feet (laughs) fell through the floorboard and I had to uh, use the Fred Flintstone mode of transportation? Any issues with those vehicles, Lado? You know, the young people today, and I hate to talk like this, but it's so true. Kids today who are learning to drive don't understand what it was like to be driving a car in the late 1970s that had been built in Detroit, sold for $1,000 brand new, spent its entire life in the Detroit area, southeastern Michigan, with the salt on the roads where you would exactly. literally have the floorboards yep. rust away. I remember being in cars where people put floor mats over holes in the floor, and you'd actually look, and you see the ground going underneath the car. That Those was my cars car. Were under- yep. Yeah, and they're, 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 they're much less common today because they've gotten better with the sheet metal and so on. But, I mean, those cars were real. <laughs> what was your first car, Craig and Steve? What, what did you guys first operate? My first car, and I can relate to exactly what Steve was talking about, was a 1978 Datsun B210. Oh, it was a, a, a little yellow school bus yellow car, and yep. my my uh, my mom bought it for me for fifteen hundred dollars for my sixteenth birthday. Started driving it about four months in, the floorboard rotted out. So my dad, who, my dad was an auto worker, yeah. and he also owned a mobile home, and he had some extra skirting around the outside of the mobile home, the the sheet metal. He put that in the bottom of the. Uh, he went into the car and riveted it up in there, four rivets, and put that that piece of sheet metal up there. Took care of the hole in my floorboard. And the good news about that car is it probably got like 60 miles to a gallon. It did. It was great. I I had a chemistry teacher who drove one of those. We used to rip on him. He goes, guys, 60 miles to a gallon. He'd laugh Uh at us. We'd we'd laugh at him. First car I drove to high school was a a 1974 Gremlin. I kid you not. A green Gremlin. Oh, Oh, no. I I got issues with the Gremlin. Yeah, I saved up my money and bought a 1969 Dodge Charger, which I had my senior year of high school. I wish I had that car now, but I don't. But, But a 69 Dodge Charger was the first cool car I owned. 
but that was a hard time getting over the the, the shame of driving a gremlin, a green gremlin to school. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Mine was that seventy-two grand Torino I always talk about on the show. I bought it for three hundred dollars for my cousin Leon, and uh, it, it didn't run that long. But it, it was it was a tank. It was green yeah. and had no floorboard. Isn't it interesting? <laughs> how, interesting how we are all revered about our first cars. I mean, Steve, basically, you've made your career on the automobile industry. Granted, the bad side of it, but uh, we, think how much we revere our first automobiles and yeah, how we oh, glowingly talk about them. Yeah, and and here's the thing, and we, uh, this is a common thing for, for car people to understand is that you develop an emotional attachment in yep. particular, and so so brand loyalty is a huge huge deal in that respect. But um, yeah, no, it's 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 funny because you, you think back and it's like, yeah, I remember. That. I remember that car so well. I gave my uh, graduation speech. I was I was not at our school. You didn't have to be the valedictorian, thank God, because I never would have been there. But you could submit a speech to do for graduation, and I wrote my speech about my best friend, my car, because that car and I <laughs> went through a lot through three years of high school, and, and it ended up being the, our graduation speech. It was uh, wow. that's how it, that's the attachment we have with our cars. You don't even have to be a car person. I'm not a car person at all. Cars, you know, a thing I just drive back and forth to work and stuff, but. We still remember our first cars and lovingly and stuff like that. But you're right. That's that's why I got into Lemon Law because it allows me to talk. Uh, you know, I talk to people all day long about cars. I mean, wh- what other job could I get where I talk about cars all day long and get paid to do it? So I mean, obviously I could be a mechanic, I could be a tow truck driver, which by the way I used to be a tow truck driver, or, or I could work in a body shop. But I, I'm a lawyer. I sit at a desk and, I, and people call me. And I talk about cars. You, you so, could be you could be a car salesman. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm not evil enough. <laughs> no, I think I, Steve and I get confused uh, for that job all the time. Steve, yeah. I don't know how much time we have left in this segment, but since you keep mentioning lemon law, what constitutes a lemon? If, yeah, first of all, remember the lemon law only covers new cars. So if you bought a used car, you, 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 you're not going to be able to do the lemon law. There might be some protections, but it's very, very difficult. But on a brand new car, if you buy it, it's got defects that occur in the first year of ownership. If that car winds up being in the shop for 30 days in the first year or four times the same problem in the first two years and cannot be fixed, the lemon law says the manufacturer is going to buy the car back from you or you know, put you into a new one that's not defective and pay my attorney fees on your behalf. So it doesn't cost you a penny to hire an attorney to handle your lemon law claim. Good information to know. We do have to take a break on the Todd L. Lemon Law Show. We'll come back and wrap the show up next. Welcome back to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. Craig, what can I say? Happy birthday, my friend. It was so great to have Steve Lato in the mothership. Uh, it's always great having Steve on. Thank you very much, Todd. Yes, yeah, Steve is awesome. L-E-H-T-O. Just search for that. You can get on his uh, YouTube channel. He's got 138 million followers and uh, people watching his shows and everything see his whole his whole story about how he got sued. That's a pretty entertaining story as well. Um, uh, and I think he's going to, I don't know if he's going to, I don't know, do you think they have uh, Santa Claus in, in Finland where he's from? I don't know. Maybe they do. Isn't that where Santa started? 
I, yeah, sure. I think so. Germany. Yeah. I think it was Germany, actually. Somewhere in that part of the world. We'll yeah, have to so look maybe, that one up. Yeah, maybe Leto is uh, playing Santa Claus this year. But. Well, Santa, since we're uh, you know coming upon Christmas Eve here, I yes. uh, can't wait for Christmas Eve and then Christmas. Uh, it, it, do you think Santa will be delivering to all the adults who are good in recreational states, you know, a product <laughs> and I, those I, in medical states more product i think in the next year i think uh, there'll be a lot of those kind of santa claus deliveries to be really honest but hey you know what we're almost uh, almost wrapping up the end of the year next year will be our big uh, next week will be our big year end show where we talk about every the be- biggest stories of the past year uh merry christmas to you uh merry christmas and, and happy holidays as well why don't we do some uh, rocking christmas music to take the show out we're done I love it, Craig. And again, have a great birthday, Craig. Thank you. uh, We'll see you next week. Same place, same time, right here in the Mothership, Black Diamond Group Mothership. We're not here for a long time. What are we here for, Craig? We're here for a good time. Take us out with some Santa music. Outside a department store, a gang of kids came over and loved me and knocked my reindeer to the floor. We said, Father Christmas, give us some money. Don't mess around with those silly toys. We'll beat you up, don't hand it over. We want your bread, so don't make us annoy. Give all the toys to the little rich boy. Sister, a cuddly toy. We don't want a jinx or a monopoly money. We only want the real McCoy. Father Christmas, give us the money. We'll beat you up if you make us annoy. Father Christmas, give us the money. Don't mess around with those silly toys. But give my daddy a job because he needs me. He's got lots of mouths to feed. But if you've got one, I have a machine. Show brought to you by Chad Malleywell Drilling of Rosebush, Clark Modular Homes, your most experienced and trusted builder in Mount Pleasant, Clear Vision Windows, Siding, Roofing, and Attic Insulation of Midland, Mackinac Properties, and Northern Michigan Vacation Rentals, buying, selling, and renting properties in the Straits of Mackinac region since 1998, Tim's Collision Plus in Ross Common, Harrison Power Sports, Central Michigan's fastest growing full line Arctic Cat dealer, and Dr. Robert Townsend and Denali Healthcare for your alternative healthcare needs. Opinions expressed on this radio program do not necessarily reflect the views of this radio station.